Let's bring in our first guest for the hour. We've got Louis St Strohmeyer. Uh, he's Octavia Wealth Advisors Partner and Wealth Advisor. He's joining us ahead of Yahoo Finance's All Market Summit presented by Northern Trust. That's on October 25th. Uh, Luis, it's good to talk to you today. You heard Emily walking us through you, uh, the through uh, the expectations here as we look ahead to big bank earnings. Um, as she noted, we've seen the strong person performance of financials. Where do you stand on that right now? And, and it, have the expectations uh, run up too high, you think, largely because the thinking is higher rates are going to be a big benefit to these big banks? Sure. I think I, I think the biggest benefit would be for those uh, banks that are not on a grand scale, the national banks, certainly you've seen a lot of rise in, in, the, in the price of their stocks over the last 12 months. But I think the forgotten story here is uh, the regional banks, the community banks. I, I, I think that impacts them the most with a higher, you know, higher rates uh, because they don't have trading arms. They don't have other major sources of income other than traditional lending. So when you have you know 100 almost 100 basis points increase in a 10 year uh, at, uh, note from last year to this year, that is about a 33 percent impact on earnings to these smaller banks, community banks, regional banks. So I do see a lot of consolidation there in the coming months, coming years, uh, at least the next 12 to 24 months. So I think that there is a lot of appetite there. There is a lot of opportunity there. Uh, and still financial sector, but I'm, I'm looking more towards the community and regional side. Yeah, how specifically have you positioned yourself um, within some of those financial names? Well, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, banks. I mean, just to name uh, name a few banks out there, you have uh, uh, Fifth Third Bank, you have uh, Huntington Bank, and I'm sorry to mention some Ohio banks. Uh, we are based out of Ohio, so we have a little bit better uh, feeling for what's going on. On there, but there's, you know, those are some of some of the banks that we're looking at. There's certainly a, a, a ton more um, in it, you know, in the scope of things. So there's a lot of opportunity in uh, in every region. Uh, energy, obviously, the big story of the day here. Uh, the sector is up well over one percent right now. Um, you know, how are you looking at that space right now? Is this kind of a, a short-term run-up that we're seeing uh, around the fears of uh, supplies, especially going into the winter season? Or, or do you think that you position yourself within uh, this sector for uh, more of a you know medium-term, long-term play in the expectation that prices will only continue to go up? Yes, uh, thank you for that. That's a good, very good comment. I, I, I think energy, since last year, we were very, very bullish on the energy sector. Uh, so towards the, the latter part of last year, I think that was a very good call. Uh, we're a little bit more cautious now. Uh, I, I think there's a big run up in energy. And uh, as far as the, uh, the, the price of, of oil, you know, touching o over $80 uh, a barrel, that's, uh, uh, that's very surprising to us, uh, of course, coming off the summer. Uh, so I think the winter months would bring uh, oil prices a, a little bit less than what we're seeing them now. But I, I think next uh, the story is next summer. I think we'll go beyond the prices that we're seeing today. So that that sector will you know certainly probably caught most of the gains that we expected since last year, uh, but probably were two, two thirds of the way. Uh, so there's still some room for for that sector in the coming months. Let's talk about the biggest risk that you see right now. Uh, you've highlighted the fact that your concern is on interest rates and tapering. I mean, the Fed has pretty um, clearly messaged that, and the expectation seems to be some kind of move coming in the next FOMC meeting. You know, what, what's the fear around that right now? Yeah, I don't think that, the, that that's a fear. I think it's, a, it's something that's been expected. The markets already priced that in. Um, and uh, because of one thing or another, I think the primarily the, the, the biggest balance uh, is the, the pandemic and the recovery with the pandemic. I mean, it, if it was my uh, my opinion is that uh, uh, we are well into a recovery and uh, the, the Delta variant and the move variant, you have to kind of be very careful if, if you were the Fed, because very if this becomes we're coming into the winter months, if this becomes a, a major issue, uh, then you want to you don't want to come in too fast on the on the tapering but there is no question in our minds that that, that is uh, that is going to happen the question is how aggressively you, do you taper 
so, but uh, uh, you, you know, I think that if we can get through this this winter and we can really put uh, the pandemic behind us, uh, I think that uh, our recovery is going to be strong. And I'm, I'm I've been saying this for for a while. I call it the slingshot effect. And I think that uh, what we experienced last year. Uh, in the you know at the height of the pandemic, uh, and then you know when everybody is throwing their arms in the air, thinking, my gosh, the uh, you know the economy, we're going into into the tank, everything is mm-hmm. you know is being uh, lost, thousands of jobs, and we were looking at 15% unemployment, you know about 15 months ago. Look at where we were and where uh, you know and where we are today. It is remarkable, and this, that's the slingshot effect, and that slingshot effect has happened before. The Roaring Twenties is a major example of that. Obviously, we don't like to talk about, and what most people remember is 1929, which is at the end of the Roaring Twenties. I don't think we'll make that mistake again, but I think maybe we are building our own uh, roaring, echo Roaring Twenties of, of, of this century. So. Um, I wouldn't discount the strength of this economy. I wouldn't discount the, the strength of this country and the people that live in this country.